Hello and welcome to today's Bible study. I am Brother Hosanna TV. Those of you who watched last week's Bible study, I believe that you were blessed. And as we continue in today's Bible study, we are going to add to what we already know. Let us pray. Lord our King, we thank you. We give you glory and praise for all you've been to us. Thank you for giving us the sincere milk of the Word of God so that we can be well fed and grow in the grace that is in Christ Jesus Christ. Lord God, we pray today that you open the very hearts of our hearts and give us true understanding. We sincerely ask that you help us to overcome every weakness of the flesh the very things that can make us to miss the kingdom lord help us to overcome them and also help us to grow in the areas of our strength we believe that your word can heal and give us life even life to our mortal bodies therefore lord we ask that your word will come up we come up with power to heal and distribute to us according to our various needs in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen so last week we talked about the rapture and we looked at some details about the rapture the things we need to know two weeks ago we looked at what the rapture actually is and today we want to talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ why am I talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ today because by the grace of God, the following week, I'm going to talk about the difference between the second coming of Jesus Christ and the rapture. That is what we are going to look at in the following Bible study. So, what is the second coming of Jesus Christ? The second coming of Jesus Christ, it goes by different names. It is called the Advent, the second Advent, the Parousia. It is the future return of Jesus Christ in his glory to the earth to judge his enemies and set up his kingdom he will also reward his faithful followers those who have been faithful to him there are two comings of jesus christ to the earth one he came as a child as a savior and he is going to return as a judge and as a conquering king as a conquering messiah these separate comings can be seen in Isaiah chapter 7, verses 14, verses 9, chapter 9, 6 to 7, and then Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. When Jesus came, he finished the work of salvation. He showed us the way. He said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. So he showed us this and went away. And he promised in John chapter 14 that he was going to come back to take us home. That where he is there we will be also and then he is going to come before the great tribulation which is called the rapture which I talked about in the last two videos last two Bible studies he is going to come again in the rapture to take away the church after taking away the church it is going to be very very chaotic then we will enter the three the first three and a half years which is the beginning of the birth bank and then the great tribulation and uh, uh, then we'll meet the desolation the abomination that causes desolation and then the second three and a half years of the great tribulation and it is going to be very very terrible during this period the mark of the beast will be administered to people you cannot buy you cannot sell except you take the mark of the beast so what happens the question is what happens after the great tribulation jesus christ said and immediately after the great tribulation he is going to come the sign of the son of man is going to appear in as of apostle chapter 1 verse 11 the angels declared while they were on Mount Olives, looking up 
while Jesus was being taken to heaven, he declared to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which, ye, which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in the manner, in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, what is Jesus Christ going to come back to do during the second coming? What is he coming back to do? The things that he's, he's coming back to do, there are many, but I just put some, I listed some so that we can have an overview. And I'm going to talk briefly on them. What is Jesus returning to do? First of all, he is not coming. We have to get this through understanding because some of the Jews, they misunderstood the description of the Messiah. They only saw him, majority of them only saw him as a, as a conquering king and conquering Messiah. They never saw him as the suffering Messiah, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. So when they saw him suffering, they mocked him. They said, no, this can't be our king. This cannot be our king. Our king is supposed to come and conquer. But they had some misunderstanding of the two descriptions of Jesus Christ, the two descriptions, uh, the descriptions of his two comings. So he first came as a lamb, as a child, and died and established the covenant of the New Testament. And then his second coming, he is not coming like a baby, he is not coming like uh, a lamb, he is coming like a king, a conquering king, and he is coming back again with his angels, thousands of his angels, and with the saints, he is coming for war. Number one, he is coming to fulfill the scriptures, two, Jesus Christ said he will come again, and he must come. He must, the scripture cannot be broken. Before his coming, before his first coming, it was written before he came that he was going to come. And he really came. He fulfilled the scripture. And when he came, he said, I am going to come again. And he is going to fulfill the scripture. He is going to fulfill his promise. I'm talking about the purpose of his coming. Number one, to fulfill the scripture because God cannot lie. Then number two, because he said he promised that he is going to come. Then three, the battle of Armageddon is going to come to fight the battle of Armageddon. Then to resurrect the post-rapture saints. Five, the millennium reign of Jesus Christ on earth is going to reign for 1,000 years. Six, the final judgment. Seven, the renovation of heaven and earth. Eight, the new Jerusalem. Nine, the restoration of God's kingdom on earth tend to reward and comfort the righteous, the faithful. So let's look at them one after the other. Number one, to fulfill the scripture. Like I said before, it was prophesied that Jesus Christ will come. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, that is the first promise we have about the coming of Jesus Christ, that he will come to crush the head of the serpent, even though the serpent would bite his heel will bruise his heel, which actually happened on the cross of Calvary. But Jesus Christ crushed his head once and for all and gave us the power and access that we lost when we disobeyed God. Jesus must come to fulfill the scripture. God cannot lie. God is not a man. He does not change. God does not lie at all. Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Jesus will come immediately after the great tribulation in his second coming. Then Jesus said he is going to come again. Yes, he said it. That several times he said he was going to come again. And his word must come to pass. If it was written about him that he would come through a virgin as the seed of the woman and really came and then while he was on earth, he said he was going to come and after his resurrection he also said he was going to come as through the angels even announced it on Mount Olives that the way you see him go up taken into the clouds that is how he is going to return again 
Jude chapter 1 verse 14. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Yes, he's going to come, and he's not coming alone. In the rapture, he's not coming with the saints, but he's coming to take the saints home. But in the second coming, he's coming with the saints and with, with warring angels. He's coming to fight. Zechariah chapter, chapter 14, verse 5. And the Lord my God shall come. And all the saints with thee. Uh, this is the last part of it. Then in Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. Jesus Christ said. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. With power and great glory. This is Jesus' own word. He is going to come again. Mark chapter 14 verse 62. And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So Jesus Christ promised with his own mouth that he is going to come again. Yes. And when he comes, three, the third thing is that the purpose of his coming. Number three is a battle of a Magdalene. Jesus Christ will come as the conquering Messiah with the host of heaven to fight against the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. During this battle, Satan will be captured and bound for 1,000 years. So Satan, one of the purposes of his coming is to bind Satan. And after binding Satan, there will be the reign of of Christ on earth for 1,000 years. We shall talk about that. Then there shall be the resurrection of post-rapture saints. I'm going to do a teaching specifically for these post-rapture saints. Some people believe that after the rapture, nobody will be saved. But no, that is not the truth. After the rapture, people are going to evangelize lukewarm Christians who are left behind. Many of them are going to be serious with their Christian lives and the gospel is going to still be preached. So, those of you who believe that after the saints are taken home, there will be no saints on the earth when Jesus Christ is going to return during the second coming, it is not so. Let's look at what the Bible says. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, let me read it out. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the source of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. These are people whose, who were beheaded because the witness for Jesus. And for what other reasons were these people beheaded? And for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. During the time of the great tribulation everybody is going to be forced to receive the mark of the beast on their forehead or on the right hand but there are those who are going to resist them these people are going to resist they are not going to re receive the mark of the beast they are and they will pay with their own blood they are going to pay with their own life they are going to be beheaded they are going to be killed there is going to be so much persecution. It is going to be very, very hot because the beast is going to be on earth. The false prophet is going to be on earth and everything is going to be in real chaos because the church must have been taken before this time through the rapture. Let me continue. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These are post-rapture saints. After the rapture, these people are going to stand on their ground and fight to the end. And when Jesus Christ will return, many of them must have died. Killed by the false prophets and uh, the beast and uh, the armies of Satan himself. So Jesus, when Jesus Christ comes, 
these people are going to partake in the first resurrection. Remember, all those who die before the rapture are going to, all the saints that die before the rapture are going to resurrect to meet Jesus Christ in the earth. They are going to precede the living. They will go first before the living will go to meet Christ in the earth. Jesus is not going to come to the earth. He's not going to step his feet on the ground. He's going to be in the clouds and then we will go to meet him and so ever be with him in heaven. And then those saints that raptured will come again during the second coming with the angels of God. And when they come, the, all those who die during the tribulation, that means after the rapture, till the second coming of Jesus Christ, are going to partake in the first resurrection. They are going to partake in the first resurrection. And they will reign with Christ for 1,000 years. So the number, number five thing, the purpose is that the millennial reign of Jesus Christ here on earth. So bodily, Jesus Christ is going to establish his kingdom here on earth. And he's going to reign for how many years? 1,000 years. Let's read the Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 4 again, and then we will add verse 5. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years. We are finished. This is the first resurrection. So those who died, those who died not in the Lord, did not partake in the first resurrection, except only the post-rapture saints that partook in the first resurrection. And these people are going to reign with Christ. Remember, he already, come, he already comes from heaven with the raptured saints. And then the saints who were murdered because of the testimony of Christ. And because they rejected the mark of the beast. And because they refused to worship the image of the beast. They were beheaded. Those saints are going to partake in the first resurrection and then they will reign with Christ on earth for 1,000 years. And then the sixth purpose is the final judgment. Jesus Christ is going to judge the living and the dead and he's going to reward them accordingly. Revelation chapter 20, 12 and 13 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open, and another book was open, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, and which were in it. And, it, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So the sixth purpose of Jesus' second coming, which is one of the things he's going to do after he comes, is that he is going to sit on the throne of judgment and deliver the final judgment, which is on the great day. The seventh thing is the renovation of heaven and earth. This heaven will be renovated. The earth will be renovated. This is not the earth that we are going to dwell. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 5, the Bible says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. This is a promise. I am making everything new, including the things in heaven and the things on earth 
there is going to be newness of everything. And in verse 1, it is written, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In the new earth, there is going to be no sea. It is going to be a paradise on earth. The lost paradise of the Garden of Eden will be regained. Yes, and then there is going to be the new Jerusalem. So Jesus Christ is going to set up the new Jerusalem, which is going to come down from heaven to the earth. It is called the Bride of Jesus Christ. Some people think that the church is the Bride of Jesus Christ. No. The church is the body of Christ. The Bride of Jesus Christ is the new Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 and 2 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from out of the heaven, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, a dawn for her husband. Jesus Christ is a husband of the new city, Jerusalem. Then there is going to be the restoration of God's kingdom on earth. This is when God himself is going to dwell among men. Remember the name of Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us. And it is not just going to be Jesus coming bodily as a baby and then lived with us for a time and then left, um, promised the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Spirit comes to live among us till when we are going to have these events. It is not going to be like that anymore. It is going to be God himself on his throne dwelling among men. Revelation chapter 21, 2 to 3 says, And I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Praise God. Please, do everything you can to enter this kingdom. All my attention is focused there. I hate it when I get, when my attention is diverted. I hate it. It makes me sad. When I see myself not living the life I really want to live, the life of Someone is petting the kingdom. I hate it. And I pray to God every day that, Lord, I want to be a part of this kingdom. Because the world we see, everything is passing away so fast. In fact, I was telling my mom today, I was telling her, I told her, I said, in this world, I don't see this world as a place where we should spend a hundred years, as a place where we should have very old age. I don't see it as a blessing. There's so much wickedness here. And I told her, she said, but God promises to, to protect us and also provide for us. And I said, yes, even if you have God's protection, even if you have God's blessing, what about the evil you see every blessed day, the oppression you see, the level of corruption you see every day, it is torment to my spirit. It torments me. I don't want to be here for long. And she said, well, you can say that. I said, well, very soon you are going to die and leave. And you will leave me and my God to decide that. <laughs> so much evil is happening here. Please do everything you can to enter this kingdom. You can't afford to miss it. I don't want to miss it. There is nothing like once saved, always saved. Please do the best you can to enter this kingdom. Give up everything you can to make sure you make this kingdom. Because if the rapture takes place and you are left behind, it is going to be very, very terrible. I know there could there, there is chance of making heaven again, but if you can't make it now, now that nobody is disturbing you, you can worship God when you want to worship, 
Nobody disturbs you. How is it going to be if you can't make it now? How is it going to be when you shall be forced, when you will not be able to buy nor sell? It's going to be terrible, too terrible. Let's do everything we can to enter the kingdom of God. Let's forget about those who are pursuing money, pursuing prosperity, pursuing life, pursuing the things of this world at the expense of their soul. Jesus Christ said, what shall it profit a man if he gains everything in the whole world and loses his soul? It is in vain. Then finally, Jesus Christ is going to reward and comfort the righteous. There is so much evil going on on earth. There are lots of times people oppress us and we let them go. A lot of times people come to take our properties and we look and just say, well, let me let go. I don't want trouble. A lot of times we allow ourselves to be defeated because we have an aim. Our aim is to enter the kingdom. There are things that we're supposed to enjoy, but we tell ourselves that, no, I can't enjoy this. It's going to offend God. I can't go there. It's going to offend God. I can't do this. It's going to offend God. And we fast. We, we see people eating good food and we fast because we want to discipline ourselves, because we want to humble ourselves. There is so much evil going on. But after now, the Lord is going to comfort us and He is going to reward us. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. G Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be. Jesus Christ is coming with His reward, and He is going to reward each and every one of us. And the reward is going to be really, really great. According to our works, let me tell you this. Salvation is free. But reward is not free. Reward is according to our works. Everybody that has their free gift of salvation will make it to heaven. But our reward is not going to be the same. You can't compare people like Paul, who preached, got beaten a lot of times, crossed a lot of seas. Look at the way he counted, look at the troubles he faced. You can't compare that kind of person with the, the saint who was once a criminal and was crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross, who made heaven right there on the cross when he confessed Jesus Christ and asked the Lord to remember him when he finally entered his kingdom. And Jesus Christ told him, today, today you will be with me in paradise. You can compare the reward of that man with the reward of Paul. Let us strive. Let us not just enter the kingdom, but let us labor and lay our, our rewards in and lay our worth in heaven let us not just enter the kingdom but let us enter with the hope of getting handsome rewards from the Lord yes because he is going to reward us according to our works while we were in the body Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever thing a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow good, you are going to reap it. If you sow bad, you are going to reap it. And those of us who are on this narrow way, on this narrow path to heaven, I beg you, please do good works. If you see the poor on the street, please give them money. You see people, even if you see a madman, buy food for them. Some of them, you give them money, they go and buy cracks, they buy cigarettes, they smoke. But if you, you can still help them. Uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday, precisely, just a few days ago, I saw a madman, someone I used to know when he was sane, when he wasn't mad. I was, when I was a small 
child, when I was a child, I used to know him. I saw him while I was returning from travel. I saw him and I, I know he smokes. So I saw someone selling food. I, I paid for three meals and I said, I'm not telling you because I want you to praise me, but I'm just giving you an example. I paid for his meal. I said, okay, you're going to take food today. Uh, the seller of the food told me the kind of, uh, uh, the kind of ration, the size of meal he takes, and I paid for three meals so that he could go there the following day and a day after to eat there. I didn't do it for him because he, he is going to reward me. No. But out of human sympathy, nobody is going to reward me. But my reward is in heaven. Do not give to those who can give back to you only. But give to those who cannot give back to you. This is what Jesus Christ was saying. Lay your treasure in heaven where thieves can never go. There is a prayer I pray for some people who are so zealous in the work of God. They support the work of God. And I pray for them that God don't allow these people to miss their reward. Any weakness in their lives, take it away. Help them to deal with their weaknesses. Lord, if you know, if they live long, they are going to miss the kingdom. Please take their lives when you know they are fit for the kingdom. The same prayer I pray for myself. Let me tell you one thing. There is nothing like dying young in my dictionary. Anytime you go, provided you are entering the kingdom, fine. There's nothing like, oh, this brother died young, this sister died young. We... God doesn't live in time. The soul of a human being does not live in time. It is the body that lives in time. The soul lives in eternity. It is a time. Eternity is a time that has no beginning and has no ending. That is where we're going to. So we must do everything possible to make sure we enter. Let me talk about the let me read the last scripture. Revelation chapter 20. 21 verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither there shall be neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away everything is going to pass away behold I make all things new please there are some of you who are old enough to get married. You see your mates with children. You see them with your wives, with your husbands. Sometimes your flesh pushes you to have sex, to satisfy the desires of the flesh and you tell yourself, no, I can do it, I'm not married. Let me tell you the truth. Even if, even if, I mean, even if, you do not get married and have your own children. Or you are married and you have no children or you have children, they are giving you trouble, your husband is giving you trouble and you are enduring because you are in Christ and you are looking forward to seeing this kingdom. I tell you the truth, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bring his handkerchief and wipe away all tears from your eyes. And you are not going to remember the things of pains anymore. A second in heaven, you will forget all your pains. If you spend a day in heaven, you are going to forget all your sorrows, all your troubles, all your pains. You will be happy indeed. Brethren, let us strive to enter the kingdom. The second coming of Jesus Christ is going to be both for the righteous and for the sinners. It is going to be for judgment. The question is, are you ready to face the judgment of God? Quickly, let's remind ourselves of the purposes of His coming, all the things that He's going to do, the things that He's going to do when He comes 
during the second coming. He's going to fulfill the scripture. Jesus Christ said he will come again and he is going to fulfill this promise. There will be the battle of Armageddon. He will resurrect the post rapture saints. And then the millennial reign of Jesus Christ on earth for 1,000 years. And then there will be the final judgment. There will be the renovation of heaven and earth, the new Jerusalem, the restoration of God's kingdom on earth, and there will be the reward and comfort of the righteous. Let me ask this question. If Jesus Christ returns now, are you going to rapture with him? Please, if you know your life is not right with God, this is a time to put your life right. And if you know you are on the path, do not give up at all. Continue to feed yourself with the sincere milk of the word so that you can be rapture worthy. In case you have any question, do well to reach me. The details of my contacts are on the screen. Visit our website, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. And also visit hosanadevi.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share this video, this teaching to people. You can use it in your home Bible study. You can share it to people. You can uh, re-upload it depending on what you want to do with it so long as it is legal. If you haven't given your life to Christ, please do where to give your life to Christ. Look for a Bible-believing church to attend. And also, if you need my assistance, I am here to lead you to Christ. If you need counseling, I am here to assist you. My details are on the screen and also in the description box. Thank you for watching. Let us pray. Oh Lord our King, we thank you for your word that we've heard today. We ask that you teach us and continue to expatiate on these words in our hearts. Help us to use these words to live life. Expatiate on the truth that we've just received. Spirit of a living God, help us to enter the kingdom. For those, of, for those who are listening that have not received you or are living lukewarm lives or are having one weakness or the other, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them. May the Lord give you strength. Receive grace to run this race without looking back in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you to overcome every addiction, every weakness in the name of Jesus. May the Lord also strengthen you to improve on the areas of your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. In any way you are lacking, I pray for you that the Lord will meet you at the points of your need. May the Lord give you everything you need for life and godliness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, I also pray for as many that have been supporting this ministry, that you will support them, take away sorrows from their lives, uplift, uplift them in any areas of their lives that they need upliftment. Surprise the children. And Lord, there will be so much trouble in the world. We pray for those in the positions of authority, that Lord, you will uphold them and lead them. Help us and save us from the plans of globalists. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Don't forget to share. See you again next time. God bless you.